All those theorems we've learned about binomial coefficients generalize to multinomial coefficients as well, including the recurrence relation and the binomial theorem. To be specific, if we take the polynomial x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xk and raise it to the nth power, we get the sum of all possible products of x1, x2, etc., xk, whose powers sum to n, and the coefficients on each of those terms is going to be the appropriate multinomial coefficient. Let's see an example. We're going to cube w plus x plus y plus z. I want you to take a second, pause the video, and try to do this the normal way by distributing and quote unquote foiling things out. When you get sick of it, come back to this video. All right, so the first thing to realize is that a term of the polynomial corresponds to a multiset. How do I mean that? Well, take for example the term w squared x. That's the same as the multiset w w x. So we're going to count the terms by counting the multisets from the universe w x y z that have a cardinality of three. There are four minus one plus three, choose three terms. That's six choose three which is 6 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial, which is 6 times 5 times 4 divided by 6, or 20. That's how many terms there are. The coefficients on the terms are all of the possible multinomial coefficients, where n is equal to 3 and all the ri's sum to 3. However, because of symmetry, there really aren't that many options. We've got 3 choose 1, 1, 1, which is equal to 3 factorial divided by a bunch of 1s, which makes 6. We could also have 3 choose 1, 2, 1, which is 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial, which is just 3. Or we could have 3 choose 3, 0, 0, which is 3 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 0 factorial, 0 factorial, which is 1. Thanks to symmetry, there are no other multinomial coefficients. So we're really just going to look at the terms and see if any of the exponents are a 3 or a 2, and we'll know what coefficient to write in front of it. The hard part of this is going to be writing down all of the different terms, but it's still going to be easier than trying to use the distributive law. And as long as we're careful, we can write them all down. We know that there are 20. First, let's have as many w's as possible. So we have w cubed, and then if we take away a w, we can either put it towards an x or a y or a z. If we take away another w, we can put it towards another x, an x and a y, an x and a z, two y's, a y and a z, or two z's. We could have three x's, two x's and a y, two x's and a z, an x and two y's, an x, a y, and a z, an x and two z's, we could have three y's, we could have two y's and a z, we can have a y and two z's, or we can have three z's. Count and you'll find that we've written down 20 distinct terms, as predicted. Now we apply the coefficients. We remember that if any of the exponents are a 3, our coefficient is a 1. If any of the exponents are a 2, our coefficient is 3. And if all of the exponents are 1s, our coefficient is a 6. So w cubed gets a coefficient of 1. w squared x gets a coefficient of 3. w squared y gets a coefficient of 3. So does w squared z. So does wx squared. wxy gets a coefficient of 6. Same with wxz wy squared gets a coefficient of 3, wyz gets a coefficient of 6, wz squared gets a coefficient of 3, x cubed gets a coefficient of 1, x squared y gets a coefficient of 3, x squared z gets a coefficient of 3, so does xy squared, xyz will have a coefficient of 6, 
xz squared will have a coefficient of 3. y cubed will have a coefficient of 1. y squared z will have a coefficient of 3. yz squared will have a coefficient of 3. And z cubed will have a coefficient of 1. And that's it. wx plus y plus z cubed, just like that.